Hello, I am Matthias and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will have a look into some other workflow improvements apart from what I showed in the last video. These are mostly smaller changes, but will make life a lot easier in FL Studio. In previous versions, the place we could locate the playhead was always limited to the last clip in the playlist or the last event in an editor. If we wanted to extend this range, we had to add events or clips to a later point to get more space to work with. This got changed now for a good reason, which will make a lot of you very happy. Even without having any clips in the playlist, we can set the play cursor to wherever we want. The same works of course in the editors. But what for? FL Studio always got a quite unusual way of pasting stuff. Clips and events got inserted at the very first full bar line, which was visible on the left hand side. Copying this pattern clip and scrolling over, that bar 13 is the first full visible bar on the left hand side, locates the pasted clip to this bar line. The same in the piano roll editor. Copying this note, scrolling over to bar 5, inserts the pasted note at the grid line of bar 5, even if there was plenty of space before. This was not just very unusual, it wasn't very flexible either, and it was just possible to paste to full bars and completely different to how other programs work. For the new update, they overhauled the system and now we can paste to the play cursor position. This not just allows us to paste to every wished position, even to beats and sixteenths, but it's more common and easier to understand and to use than the previous way. I already hear the critics. Wow, what a great change. Finally, after 22 years, they made such simple stuff possible what others had all the time. Yes, that's all true. And it seems quite ridiculous when you look at it without thinking too much about it. I don't want to bore you, but this is a perfect example what must have been done behind the scenes to realize even such changes which seem so little and seem to be done easy and quickly. There was a good reason for that previous behavior. FL Studio was called Fruity Loops before, with an idea behind. It was primarily designed as a loop creating tool and was made to auto loop without any user interaction. It was not designed to be a complete arranging tool with a linear workflow where you might want to arrange stuff in a pure linear fashion. It was designed to work differently, which was very beneficial for genres like hip hop where it quickly became the perhaps most used program. And for making this possible, the original developer just thought this might be a good idea. Nonetheless, times have changed. The user base has changed. Demands from this new user base have changed. And if this behavior wouldn't have been integrated so deeply into the code from the very first days and the very basics of the core program, it would have been changed much earlier. I cannot even imagine how much code must have been changed to make even this little change possible. This wasn't for sure not just adding some lines to the code by changing the complete behavior under the hood. And I think most of FL Studio users are very happy that finally it was made possible and we'll appreciate it. But let's move on. Related to this, there's another great change which drove me nuts before. Audio and instrument tracks were a great addition to FL Studio in the last major update to get more into the realm of linear workflow. But there was one behavior always interrupting my work and brought my personal workflow to a halt. For the purpose of this tutorial, I just loaded a demo song here which comes with FL Studio. But let's assume that's a song you're currently working on. Let's further assume, here in the middle of the song you want to add a bit of stuff with instrument and audio tracks. I insert a new track and want to add a new instrument by dragging it to the track header. The instrument loads and even a new pattern was generated. But this new pattern wasn't just generated. It was automatically placed into the playlist, what's great in general. But it was placed at the beginning of the song. I cannot leave it there, because the pattern I want of course to fill with notes and it would afterwards play in the intro section of the song which would be the wrong place. I want to play it in the chorus. This means I have to scroll to the beginning, 
delete the clip where it was auto-placed and have to manually insert it to the wished location. The same happens when you create audio tracks by dropping a sample to the track header. Perhaps you have already noticed yourself how nerving this can be when you're just focused on a different section of a song and the idea you have currently in mind. But not any longer. Because of our new behavior that we can now locate the play cursor to wherever we want and can paste to the play cursor. They included a new behavior for auto-inserted patterns and audio clips when creating audio and instrument tracks. I do here the same and insert a new track into the project. I place the play cursor to the start of the chorus and drag over my instrument. This makes me very happy. No more deleting and inserting the pattern to the wished position. Now with audio clips. My play cursor is in the right spot, but just to demonstrate that it's really play cursor related, I place it to a different beat. This is such a great change. It looks tiny on the paper, but this will have a giant impact on my workflow. Did you notice the other change which was visible here? When creating instrument tracks in the older version, the new track was auto-selected that you can play the instrument directly after the creation. But when doing the same with the audio track, the track below is still selected, which I right-clicked before to insert the new track. Because we got now more actions which rely on selections, the behavior was changed now too. Newly created audio tracks get selected now. The same goes for duplicating tracks. Before, the last selected track is still selected. In the new version, the selection goes to the duplicated track. In previous versions, when we dropped multiple files into the playlist, they were automatically staked vertically onto multiple tracks. There was no other option. While this is still the default behavior in the new version, we have now a modifier key. If you hold Shift before letting go your mouse button, the files get placed sequentially onto one track. This will be a great help in those situations where you need it. One more for today. In the playlist, we have now a new button. Instead of having to go into the right-click menu and diving through the submenus when you want to create a new instrument or audio track directly in the playlist, we can just use this button now. It shows us nearly the same menu we would have got in the channel rack when using the plus button. Here we can choose our instrument out of the list to create new instrument tracks, which will always use the first available free track in the playlist. The same works for audio tracks. A hack they built into it? You can right-click the plus button to create new audio tracks quickly. That's it for today. Smaller changes and additions, but I think they are really a great help. And bit by bit they put the puzzle together. I hope you will enjoy them as much as I do. Have a great time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.